Halfway through the implementation of the 2030 Agenda, the ASEAN region has made immense progress towards the achievement of the SDGs. However, select group of women, men, girls and boys are still lagging behind. Different population groups are disadvantaged for different goals. The ASEAN Gender Outlook zooms in on these groups based on the newest available gender data. The population living in extreme poverty in the region is 10 times lower than it used to be 20 years ago. But women remain more likely than men to live in poverty, especially those in peak reproductive age. As the climate crisis unfolds and the Earth's temperatures continue to rise, some of the region's gain may be lost. If the temperatures increase by more than 3 degrees Celsius, roughly 2 million people will be pushed into poverty by 2030 across the region. In every country in Southeast Asia, women are more likely than men to face food insecurity, that is, to lack sufficient, varied, and adequate food for all their meals. While gender gaps are small in some countries, they are substantial in others. Pregnant women are particularly vulnerable to food insecurity. When nutrient intake is insufficient, this can cause anemia, preeclampsia, hemorrhage, and even death. The region's agri-food systems are still vulnerable. The forestation and land transition, the increasing use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides, and an over-reliance on cash crops and monocultures are all contributing to soil degradation and economic instability. Thus, with worsening climate change, more women will be food insecure. At 61 out of 100 in the Universal Health Coverage Index, the region has room for improvement to ensure all women, men, girls and boys have access to health care when they need it. For women in the region, the key barrier to access health care include cost of treatment, distance to nearest health facility and safety, mobility and other concerns associated with going to the doctor alone. Women in rural areas and remote regions remain underserved. Most children in the region complete primary education. However, only three in every five complete secondary. Girls are overall more likely than boys to complete all level of education. Administrative and economic barriers are key obstacles to completing education. The cost of textbooks, tuition, transportation and meals can be too high for many. In addition, the opportunity cost of attending school instead of working prompts many parents to take their children out of school, particularly boys who can find construction jobs or other work more easily than girls. Despite substantial progress to enhance women's participation in parliaments, no country comes close to a 50-50 representation. Younger women in particular are largely absent. Only 14% of parliamentarians are under 40, even though 63% of the ASEAN population are. And where women are present, they often are in charge of social affairs, such as ministries of women and children. In contrast, they are largely absent from ministries of energy, transportation, and natural resources. Almost one in every 10 women in the region has experienced physical or sexual violence at the hands of an intimate partner in the past 12 months. Although this figure is below the global average and the prevalence rates have slightly decreased in some countries, more and more survivors are refraining from seeking help. Limited agency to leave the house alone, lack of trust in security and justice institutions, and the belief that services may not make a difference in their lives are deterring women, especially those with no education or only primary education, who are the least likely to seek help. Some of the region's largest gender gaps pertain to unpaid care and domestic work. Women are still largely in charge of child care. The same is true for domestic work, such as cooking, cleaning the house, grocery shopping, and other tasks. The gaps are particularly large for women in reproductive age, when many women step out of the labor force to care for the children. The ASEAN region has made substantial strides towards universal access to clean drinking water. 94% of people have clean water at home or within a 30-minute walk. Still, in villages and other remote areas underserved by water infrastructure, the poorest women are still struggling to find clean drinking water. Only 6 of every 10 of them have access to clean drinking water. The region struggles with unhealthy levels of air pollution. Emissions from industry, transportation, and waste management are key culprits, though agricultural burning practices and forest fires contribute as well. As a result, air pollution is responsible for more than 400,000 deaths per year in Southeast Asia. Beyond outdoor air pollution, poor air quality indoors also affects people's health. More and more people have now access to electricity, but many in rural areas still cook with charcoal, kerosene, and wood. As women are often in charge of cooking, they are directly exposed to these harmful fumes. The effects are even worse when they cook in enclosed spaces. 
The ASEAN region has remarkably low levels of unemployment. Only 2.5% of people are currently looking for jobs but failing to find them, compared to 5% globally. However, 7 in 10 of these workers are engaged in informal employment, meaning they don't receive social security or unemployment benefits. Because they often have to deal with household chores and many need flexibility in their schedules, this may prevent women from accessing formal jobs. Digital platform use, which is on the rise across the ASEAN region, provides additional opportunities for women to find flexible jobs. But lack of regulation still translates into high vulnerability. The availability of infrastructure such as schools, health facilities and transportation enables better access to education, healthcare and other public services. In the ASEAN region, this has contributed to reduction in adolescent birth rates. 35 of every 1,000 births in the region are from adolescent mothers. Across countries, teenage pregnancies are more common among uneducated girls. They are also more common among those living in remote areas where education infrastructure is scant. Having a school within walking distance that includes basic facilities such as electricity, running water, and adequate toilets encourages teenage girls to stay in school. In turn, they are less likely to have children before turning 20. Many people move across border within the ASEAN region, seeking employment opportunities. Migrant women and men typically take up jobs requiring manual work, such as construction or domestic work. Many of these jobs are informal and unsafe, making migrant workers particularly vulnerable. Across the region, violence at workplace is common. Men are more likely to report incidences of psychological violence, which is widespread. Women, in turn, report more experiences of sexual violence at work. This is all the more worrisome because many migrant workers cannot make formal complaints to authorities, especially if their migratory status is unregistered. The urban population in most ASEAN countries is expected to double by 2050. Cities provide livelihood opportunities, but many of those coming from rural areas end up taking up low-paid jobs and residing in slum settings. This poses health and safety risk for women. The incidence of diarrhea and various forms of infections is higher in slum settings. For women living in slums, safety is also a key issue. In all countries in the region with available data, they were more likely than other city residents to experience physical or sexual violence. In Southeast Asia, every person consumes 8.4 metric tons of materials per year. More than 100 million metric tons of food are wasted every year. This is 149 kilograms per person. These generate inordinate amounts of waste, which contribute to the region's emissions and pollution. Despite increasing amount of food waste, food insecurity remain the issues in some countries, particularly among women. 17% of women and 16% of men remain food insecure. Women living in the poorest rural households are the most likely to be underweight, indicating they may not be eating enough. While women in the poorest urban households are the most likely to be overweight or obese because their diet is not varied or nutritious. The effects of climate change are different for women and men. After a disaster, men are more likely to participate in rescue operations. But women typically take care of those injured or sick. Because of gender differences in ownership of assets and dependence on natural resources, their livelihoods are also affected differently. Climate-related phenomena such as more frequent droughts, worsening aridity and increases in temperatures also correlate with higher levels of child marriage and adolescent birth rates. For instance, in almost all countries with data, women living in areas with frequent droughts are more likely to marry before turning 18 and have teenage pregnancies than women in other parts of the country. Given that climate change affects women and men differently, national climate policy should address climate-related challenge with a gender lens. However, an analysis of climate plans or nationally determined contributions reported in line with the Paris Agreement shows that only a few countries in the region prioritize gender issues in their climate policies. The health of the ocean surrounding the ASEAN region is in peril. Extremely high concentration of algal blooms driven by agricultural runoff and wastewater take up almost 4% of Southeast Asia waters. The region has more beach litter than any other in the world, more than 288,000 pieces per square kilometer. In addition, the use of trawling and other destructive fishing practices and the widespread illegal unreported and unregulated fishing operations are damaging the ocean food web. 
web, as well as the broader ecosystem and the livelihoods of coastal communities. As fish stocks plummet, small-scale fishing folks, many of whom are women, are suffering the consequences, as they can't always change fishing locations because they don't necessarily own boats or other fishing gear. Also, these women that engage in fisheries rarely get to make related management decisions. In a survey conducted in the Philippines and Indonesia, many had little to no say in decisions regarding how to spend their fishing income. Enabling women to make these decisions could help curb marine degradation if, for instance, they chose to invest their income in low-carbon and selective fishing gear. Approximately 15% of the world's tropical forests are in Southeast Asia. They are home to thousands of animals, plants, and fungi, and play a critical role to carbon sequestration and limiting the effects of climate change. They also maintain the livelihoods of millions of people. Yet, the share of land area covered by forests is decreasing across the region, and primary forests are rapidly disappearing, largely as a result of expanding cropland. These losses means that millions of tons of CO2 to emissions remain in the atmosphere, accelerating climate change. When primary forests are lost, so is biodiversity. This has tremendous implications for people's food, livelihoods, and health. For instance, there is a correlation between emerging hotspots for forest loss in places like Indonesia, Lao Piria, and Thailand, and the predicted spread of malaria by 2050. This is worrisome. Although new malaria cases decreased substantially between the year 2000 and 2020, they have increased in recent years. Data shows that children with a fever are less and less likely to go see a doctor. With fewer doctor visits, healing periods may be lengthened, and care burdens may increasingly fall on women. ASEAN is one of the world's safest regions. Less than two people per 100,000 are victims of homicide. Theft, fraud, and drug use crimes are all below global averages. In recent years, however, the region has seen a decreasing sense of safety. As many as 30% of women in some countries feel less safe now than they did five years ago. Economic, health, and safety disruptions brought by the COVID pandemic and subsequent economic downturn are largely to blame. Corruption and illegal wildlife trade are bigger concerns in Southeast Asia, but many ASEAN countries resume seizures shortly after the pandemic as well. The region is both a supply and demand market for wildlife parts, such as tigers, pangolins, and elephant tusks. Ensuring that women are able to contribute to law enforcement and security, including those living in rural areas where most of these activities takes place, is essential to promote gender-sensitive practices and enhance safety within and beyond the region. Over the past decade, official development assistance to support gender equality in the ASEAN region has increased substantially. At present, 43% of allocations include gender-focused actions. However, the gender emphasis of allocation has diluted over time. Compared to $256 million allocated to actions that have a gender angle, only 78 million target projects were gender equality and women's empowerment was the main goal. Continuing and expanding these investments is critical to sustain the gains achieved across the ASEAN region. Yet, additional investment must target gender allocations towards key areas where Southeast Asia is struggling, such as climate change, marine degradation, forest loss, and air quality, all of which require urgent attention. Ramping up efforts towards supporting the collection of related gender data remain a key priority. 